Hello everyone, welcome back. We have a new challenge today and actually we're playing is to feed a master by the name of well I guess Ushoin from Germany. And I'm feeling pretty much relieved when I've when I've seen that he's a feed a master because this means um <laughs> that uh, we will have first of all an interesting game but also when a player is um is has a confirmed account of a fide master so he's much less light light likely to to use an engine and cheat like we've seen in a couple of previous games so we have the sicilian nidorf so i've been playing throughout my life many moves here Let, let's go h3 i kind of I was hoping to try this line um, in the like uh, in this period of time. So the idea is to play g4 and to expand on the king side at one point. And after e5, I have a little choice whether to play knight b3 or e2. Let's go with knight e2, slightly more in the spirit of this variation. So at some point, my idea would be to play g4. And yeah, so he denies it, but I wanted to play g4 and then maybe knight g3 and try to play on the king side. So with this move, he aims to, to stop this. And this is also, I believe, the most uh, theoretically um, kind of accepted move. Let me play bishop g5. So this is one drawback of the move h5, that now this square is a bit weakened, so I can use it. Uh, to play my to place my bishop there comfortably, and I want to do this because I want to fight for the square on d5. So, for example, right now I want to take on f6, and I will play knight d5, followed perhaps by knight c3. Yeah, so he plays queen d8. I want to uh, increase my control over d5. That's why I'm playing the move knight c3. And actually the position we see in front of us is a position which is very reminiscent of a line in the Sicilian which is called the Sveshnikov Sicilian. Which is, in first sight it looks like white has a strategically dominating position with this knight on d5. But black has a couple of his own uh, trumps, he has the two bishops advantage first of all. Is move g6 now is actually I was I, I, I thought he was going to play bishop h6 actually in order to uh, control this diagonal but he chose bishop g7 which I believe is slightly inferior actually okay so let me castle the bishop on g7 is actually not not such a beautiful piece I would say hmm so I have this nice control over d5 but once again, it's not so easy to understand how exactly to proceed here. We can spot a little weakness on d6. So it might make sense to me to put my uh, pieces on maybe my queen on somewhere d2 or d3. And then put my rook on d1 trying to pressurize this pawn. Question is, should I place my queen on d3 or d2? Actually, if you would place his bishop on h6, I wouldn't have this option of playing queen d2 at all so maybe i should take this as an advantage because if i put my queen on d3 it might get harassed with some knight d7 knight c5 ideas so let's go queen d2 so black might now the, the question for him is always where to develop this knight because he can develop it to c6 perhaps with the aim to go knight to d4 but notice that the square on d4 is not as strong as my square on d5 because this square on d4 can always be challenged by a white pawn so um yeah he played knight c6 now the natural move for me would be rook d1 i can also try to prevent this move by playing knight e2 kind of thinking uh, prophylactically the question is how bothered am i by the move knight e4 not entirely clear. Yes, yeah, so... Hmm. 
Let's develop the rook. It kind of makes sense to me. Like, let's let's play, let's play rook d1. That's a easy enough move. So whenever he plays this move knight d4, I will be able to challenge it with knight d2. So I shouldn't be too much worried. He plays a natural move rook c8. I bowling my bishop. Perhaps it's a good time to retreat this bishop to b3 in order to be safe from all kinds of tactics so kind of a prophylactic move there knight d4 sensible of course by the way also perhaps setting a little um, idea to take on h3 followed by knight f3 check so I think I must play knight e2 at this point to fight against this knight now if he plays bishop takes h3 I have the intermediate move knight takes knight and only then I will take the bishop so I, I don't think it actually works for him hmm so he decided to take on d5 yeah probably a good move there I actually a bit underestimated this move hmm yeah because I really don't want to take with the pawn on d5 because it blocks my own bishop but it seems like I might be forced to do so. Hmm. That's a bit unfortunate. I can also start with knight takes knight with the idea that if he takes on d4, I will be I will take on d5 with my bishop. I cannot take with the bishop right now because my pawn on c2 is hanging, so yeah. Hmm. Yeah, probably played inaccurately. With in hindsight, maybe I should have posed my queen on d3, if, if we think about it. But you know, uh, <laughs> no place to regret there. Yeah, e takes d5 is really a depressing move to make. I really want to somehow make this move work. But it's probably just not working, which is sad. Yeah, let's go e takes, no choice unfortunate very unfortunate I actually this is a very big achievement for him I think I, I believe that the fact that I was forced to take with the pawn now my, my bishop is kind of stuck on b3 and the pawn structure is actually very solid for him he might start thinking about advancing those pawns at some point also now my queen and rook are kind of pointless on their places because I have I have no option to pressurize the pawn on d6 Yeah, with the hindsight, I should have posted my queen on d3, and also perhaps I should have, I should have played the move knight e2 before he played knight e4. Probably also underestimated um, the sequence of moves. Yeah, so he's taking some time to think because he has some tempting options. It's a very critical point: should he take my bishop? Should he take my knight? Or actually, he can also choose to ignore everything and just let me take on d4 because. He can take back with his own pawn, perhaps opening up some lines for the rook. Even though I find it difficult to believe that he will actually play this. Yeah, he takes on b3. Um, let's take towards the center. Yeah, f5. Yeah, I must say, I, I, <laughs> I kind of like black's position here, but yeah, we'll have to live with that. At least I, I have this pawn chain. Queen b6. Yeah, obviously he wants to pressurize my pawn on b3. But I should be able to cover it, right? So his pawns are very mobile, those e and f pawns, but he should be careful because if he pushes his f pawn, then this pawn might fall. If he pushes the e pawn, then I have some juicy square for my knight on e6. So actually, at, at this moment, I still don't see a very clear way for him to proceed. Definitely, I, I, I prefer black's position slightly, but I think I, I don't like the move queen b6 that he made. He's kind of self-blocked his b pawn. I think he, he would be very happy if he would have the option of pushing b5 at this point. Trying to destroy my... Um, 
my pawn chain. This is why, yeah, queen c5, so he's making, kind of uh, making a room for his pawn to advance. Now it's very tough to fight against this move. Maybe rook a1 makes sense, because then the pawn on a6 will hang. It's not an amazing move at all, but let's do it. Prophylaxis, we try to avoid his plans. But it's, I believe it's, it's kind of temporary, somehow he will um, probably figure a way to uh, protect his pawn on a6 and then push b5. One of the problems in, with my position that, oh, queen takes d5, shoot, missed this one. <laughs> Yeah, but let, let's let's make it look like um, let's make it look like I sacrificed uh, the spawn. I'll post my knight on d5, and I will claim to have some compensation. Yeah, so I cannot play knight d5 right away because of the same tactic, by the way. But I can prepare it, I guess, with rook. One of those rooks. Yeah, let's say rook f. Even though I slightly weakened this pawn, but which piece should I post on d5? Should it be the knight or the rook? Tough choice. Let's play the rook to d5. At least then I would be able to exert some pressure on d6. So white basically has has some compensation for the pawn, but it's definitely not um, not enough to to compensate a full pawn. If I play queen d3 now to increase more pressure on d6, then you always have e4, which is annoying. And if I play queen to d2, you'll always have bishop h6, which is equally annoying. Why can't I put both of my pieces on d5, the rook and the knight? Th that would be really great, I have to say. Hmm. Time is running a bit low. Should I still... My queen is definitely misplaced on c2. I really have to find a better location for this piece. Maybe queen d3 and if e4, queen g3. This might make some sense. Yeah, let's try anyways, we don't have too much time. So I'm kind of counting on him to make some passive moves here, like rook d8 or bishop f8. Yeah, which he did. I'm, I'm not sure actually that uh, he should have played it. Maybe he should just um, play for activity and sacrifice this pawn. Yes, now th this pawn is... Uh, defended too many times. Should I sacrifice another pawn to get some activity, to get my rook on the sevens? It's definitely possible, but... Uh, it, it, many times what happens if it's you feel like you have a strong attack, but you, you find out it's, it's only one check. So um, it's something I really have to think about. I can also play c5 and then take on e5. But the position gets very much opened and I feel like black should be happy to open up the position having the bishop versus my knight. I can also consider some violent options like pawn to g4, trying to storm his king side. Ha, ah, tough choice. Hmm, I kind of feel like g4 makes sense because then, but it's so much weakening. Hmm. Let's play some solid move, maybe queen g3. Now let's play queen g3. I'm not sure about the point of this move, but I want to provoke him to push f4 because then 
I'll have a nice square for my knight. He'll probably not play. Um, he will probably probably not. He, will, he won't make such a move, of course. This is strategically very dubious. My queen, in some cases, might might be able to infiltrate into his position with a move like queen g5 or queen h4. And I'm also adding some more pressure against this pawn on e5. So at some point, this sacrifice with c5 might actually work in some in some specific um, cases. Okay, I really feel like my rook on d5 is kind of finished his uh, kind of his duty there. I really want to post my knight on d5. Let's move it away. So really, I'm really uncertain of where to put it because if I put it on d2 once again, I'll have this tempo. Yeah, but time is running low. I'll have to just start making decisions based more on intuition. So if he plays bishop h6, at least I'll ha I have this intermediate move on d5. So he plays rook f7, fine. The only drawback of po posting my knight on d5 is the fact that I'll, I'll take all of my pressure against this pawn, but yeah, I still have to do this, I feel. So at the moment he's still a pawn up. Bishop h6, yeah. Very sensible. So if I play rook d3, I'll have this tempo with e4. Um, oh, I have some nice move maybe there. Is this possible? If this is working, it can be great for me. Hitting his queen and they taking on d6, followed by queen takes g6. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. So, basically, the point is when I take on d6, I'm also creating the threat of queen takes g6, which is a very strong threat. So we actually queen c5. Can I? Why can't I take on d6? I think I can. Yeah, this is a huge threat. You cannot ignore it. I, I'm wondering if he missed this move. Okay, rook is okay, but seems like we restored material balance, so my position shouldn't be that bad anymore. Okay, it wasn't that bad earlier, but. With the pawns being equal, I'm feeling more confident. But time, time is running low, and I need to decide what to do with this knight. Obviously, I would like to post it on d5, but that's impossible. Let's go. Let's go on c2. Yeah. Yeah. So still, black has some chances to attack me with those pawns. So um, the position is still very much complicated. I'm not claiming to have any um, any advantage here. Okay, he played b5 right now, but is it sound? Because I can always play those rook d5 moves. No time. Okay, let's play this one. He has to draw back his queen. And then at the very least I can push c5 and have a passed pawn which I'm quite happy to get. So I have 15 seconds. That's uh, it's the only problem because I'm kind of starting to like my position. This pawn might be pushed all the way to c6. The only piece at the moment which I need to take care of is this knight on c2. Okay, e4, this allows... Okay, but he wants to play f4. Ah, uh, no time. Yeah, let's just play knight d4. He will play f4, of course.
Okay, F E3. I have to take it. He'll probably take with the rook. But those pawn advances also slightly compromise his king. So for example, now I might be threatening moves like rook takes h5, using this pin to my favor. He has this, whoops, he has this check on e1, but it seems like only one check. I can move to f2 or h2. Even though I must say that this is a very tricky position to play in time trouble. So I really have to be careful here. This is a threat at this point, so I'm wondering what he will he play. He has to do something very quick because my pawn is starting to advance also. I might have my own attacking ideas here with his with my rooks and knights knight being so centralized. It's actually a very interesting position. I really hope to have <laughs> more than 15 seconds, but uh, that's life, I guess. Okay, check. Let's go to h2. Queen e8. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to get his pieces down there. Uh, can I take? I feel like I can take it because if he plays queen e3, I always have this knight a free move. I think. He wants to checkmate me, obviously. Did I play my move with two seconds on the clock? Well, please remind me not to do this anymore. And now I have also an idea to play. Isn't this a checkmate? Yeah, I think he missed this move. Now next move I have rook d8. Yes, I think, I think white is winning. If he goes king h8. <laughs> he says in the check nice tricks but oh he resigned wow that was a very intense game uh, let's analyze it for one moment huh I'm really wonder I'm really curious what the engine will say at this point so the engine says equality actually, which is not surprising by the way, the engine always says equality, but specifically you should start with the move of queen e8, but what's the difference between this and the game? So he says rook takes h5, rook e1 check, what, wow, rook h1, <laughs> That's an amazing resource. Wow, that's that's almost impossible to see in the game. Rook h1 and a perpetual check. <laughs> queen e1 check. King h2, queen g3 and a perpetual. Wow. That's amazing. But the reason it's very difficult to see is because um, I, I, I feel like at this point my opponent was still playing for a win because he, he has the attack. But I know that Oh, so he could do this in the game also. I took on h5 at this point. He could also play this rook h1 idea. Yeah, th this is that's very beautiful. I, I think the move he made, it actually loses the game. Oh, I even had a nicer win. Rook takes h6, check, and knight f5. Gee. Missed this tactic. That's That could be a convenient way to win. But I, I think knight f3 that I played is also winning. So I'm just in time to control this square. And I think he missed how strong is this knight g5 move. It's actually checkmate in 8 moves apparently, but th what I've seen in my head is after king g8, for example, rook d8, he has no good way to block, he has to give up his queen with queen e8, so white is just winning. Yeah, very interesting game. I also was wondering because um, I really felt like after the move bishop takes d5 in the opening black is already yeah, the, comp the engine says minus 0 
already at this point yeah so he likes black position like i did um but it's interesting that at this point when he took on d5 i actually got some compensation with my um uh, that's pressure on d6 and gradually um i felt like my position got got kind of better and a very critical point probably was this r night before move yeah what <laughs> well so much missed tactics look at this 97 wow that's that's a very strong move so i, I i've actually seen the right idea to, to move my knight with the tempo but 97 o also creates a threat against this pawn and if he takes on e7 rook takes d6 i'm actually winning because those double attack this double attack are quite remarkable but yeah after this yeah engines find some f4 move but i felt at this point that white is already not worse engines has slight advantage for white but I felt like the worst is behind me. Yeah, so very interesting game. Really happy about it. And uh, yeah, good game by my opponent also. So, hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, see you in the next videos. Bye, guys.